Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of the Snowflake Data Cloud Summit here at the Moscone Center in San Francisco, California. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, alongside my co-host, co-analyst, Dave Vellante. Dave is a mom of two teenage girls who spend a lot of time on Snapchat. I, I, think, I think a lot about privacy and Snap. Yeah, I'll bet. And, <laughs> and, and, and I, when I think of Snapchat, I think of data. All right, <laughs> not what I think of, but okay. <laughs> uh, I'd like to welcome our next two guests. We have John Eckert, he is the Director of Global Marketing Science at Snap, welcome. And Bill Stratton, Global Industry Go-To-Market Lead, Media, Entertainment, and Advertising at Snowflake. So thank you both so much for coming on theCUBE. Thank you for having us. Thank, thank you. I'm going to start with you, John. Talk a little bit about how Snap is using Snowflake. Sure, yeah. Uh, Snowflake's been an incredible partner for us for the last couple of years and we're uh, you know, happy to be able to take this opportunity to actually be out in the market talking about all the great work now that we've been doing. So uh, Snowflake's an incredible partner for us on the marketing cloud space and on the data and privacy and clean room uh, product space. So over the last several years, advertisers, regulatory, uh, you know, bodies have been pushing advertisers to be much more conscientious about the way they use data. Snapchat has been privacy by design. You know, the nature of the way that the app is built is that the messages are ephemeral, they disappear. We made decisions very early on in the development of the product that we're going to not take every tracking tag that anybody wants to throw on any ad, and we wanted to be very conscientious about the way that we use user data to make sure it helped the users and it helped advertisers, and so this partnership with Snowflake and the Marketing Cloud has enabled advertisers to be able to create integrations that drive better ads performance and also do that in the most modern, privacy-safe way through data cleanrooms. So linear TV obviously gone through a huge yeah. you know, transformation, being disrupted by digital media. We're all you know, un unconnected from the cable and We've got all different kind of options and, and sure. it's, it's kind of awesome. Right? How has that affected what you're seeing in the marketplace in terms of how they're using data and how they're yeah. using your product? Well listen, I don't know if transformation's even the right word what linear TV has gone through, right? I mean, it's completely, as an industry, been changed. I think the biggest beneficiary of that is all of us as consumers, right? Um, but the power of sight, sound, and motion um, is still obviously what's critically important for uh, consumer you know, behavior and watching some of the amazing shows that are out there. But you know, this gentleman to my left, um, the platform that Snap has and reaching those kinds of consumers, as you said, your daughters, um, it's really unparalleled, right? So it's sort of this combination that I think we're seeing, this change of consumer behavior away from linear TV, Dave, as you said, to to a, an experience like Snap, where you're sharing it with your community, your friends, your family, and um, it's such an environment that advertisers, and to the announcement that we made a few weeks ago, um, want to participate in. But they want to participate in a way where they're not you know, um, taking their uh, consumer and privacy at risk, and so the Snap environment, along with Snowflake, is providing that for those advertisers and those marketers. And you know, I can't think of a better way to reach consumers like your daughters through a safe, privacy compliant platform like Snap. And we're just so glad to partner with, with uh, John and his team. And the community and the reaction that we've gotten from marketers has been amazing. So, um, super happy about that. Yeah, Snap's an yeah. amazing platform. I mean, I mean Full disclosure, I'm not a big time Snap user, but my kids are, and, and the things that they do are just remarkable. And when, when, I, when I talk to some of the like silicon vendors, they'll say, look, the ROI on consumer is like so clear. The bigger you can build GPU clusters, the better you can serve that audience, and, and you're seeing that. But take us through sort of what that means from a marketing standpoint and how you protect the privacy of your users. Yeah, sure. So, um, yeah, I mean, in the, in the space of like AI and where you know, AI and ML models are moving, obviously you can see that in direct application uh, for the users, which is where we start, and then that becomes a platform in which advertisers can then leverage it. So um, today, you can jump into Snap, opens to the camera, 
first, you can move over to some lenses. You'll start seeing lenses that have a generative AI component. So something as simple as taking a picture of you of what, whatever you would look like in the 90s. So it's kind of a snapshot back to me. Some of us were alive back in the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'd like to, to go back, back to the, to the 90s high school. Look yeah, that I had. Right. yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, and and uh, you know, today those things, you know, um, we have cell phones and we have you know, compute clusters that are capable of doing really sophisticated um, modeling and, and interpretation of really simple inputs and making a really complex output. And that's you know, obviously been really important to the user engagement side. We've seen great response and great user engagement in these types of tools, but you can see that over the course of the next months to years that advertisers are going to be able to start using this. So you see it happening in the, in the background on Snapchat as well. When advertisers implement something like a conversions API with their product catalogs, so it's like zero code implementation of being able to pass conversion data securely to Snap, the ability with that data combined with their catalog data on their website or in their app those models are being used in order to make sure you're decisioning the right product and ad to be put in front of the right person at the right time to get the best performance. And so there are subtle ways in which it's being used that just make the experience generally better for a user and for an advertiser, but there are going to be much more explicit ways that it ends up ultimately getting used down the road as you look in the entire creative value chain for marketing and advertising too. So I'm excited about the direction that it's headed because I really think we're kind of in the first inning of how you know, AI and ML models can start to improve marketing and advertising, and so there are many other touch points that are actually even more so impactful in the way a user perceives and connects with a brand and whether they ultimately buy something or don't buy something. I was going to ask you about that because the Snap, in the early days, it was amazing. It had the gamification. Go, get it, get it, get it. And uh, you know, it was a lot of fun. And then, of course, Snap was started even before Snowflake, right? So there was, there was no Snowflake for your data platform. It was probably like Hadoop back then was the the big you know, data platform. So yeah. how has Snowflake enabled, what has Snowflake enabled you to do that you couldn't do before? And to your point about early days of AI, what, what can we expect going forward? Because it, it's just like people joke that it's the dial-up modem days of, of AI. Sure, yeah, so um, two big things that, that uh, Snowflake's really enable for Snapchat. The first is, um, as I sort of alluded to, this marketing cloud launch and the zero code connector for being able to pass conversions data in order to drive performance and optimization is crucial. Um, we've seen a 300% increase in the number of convergence API integrations that we've had in the last year, which is huge. I mean, advertisers are, are really moving in a direction of privacy safe uh, you know, integrations with Snapchat to drive ads performance and performance marketing, not just brand marketing. And being built into Snowflake's marketing cloud in the way that it is, is going to be able to exponentially increase that growth rate. What's interesting, just to you know, uh, tap into what John just said is, he's not talking about chip performance or model performance, he's talking about optimizing an experience for a marketer, okay? So there's a lot of press and there's a lot of you know, fanfare talking about chips and models and comparison of models and things like that. At the end of the day, the marketer on the Snap platform just wants their ad to perform better. They want it to be relevant, right? They want it to perform in a way that sells product for them. And so all his comment is nothing about the performance of the chips, it's all about the value for the marketer. And I think that's kind of the first out or the first inning, whatever analogy you want to use, I think we're going to kind of start to see that with Snowflake trying to reduce the complexity of AI. I'm not going to move data around to get chip performance. I'm actually keeping the data in Snap's environment on Snowflake and then just optimizing for marketers. And then the consumer experience, as he mentioned, is only going to benefit as well. Yep. On theCUBE we talk a lot about how these technologies are really fundamentally changing how work gets done, how people do their jobs, and, and, and really how roles. Can you talk a little bit about your role as a marketer in terms of how things have really changed even in the past 18 months? Sure, yeah, I, we did a session yesterday where I did five demos in 45 minutes of AI capability, all for marketers, okay? 
And so there used to be you know, organizations on the marketing and advertising side that they had large teams of people building audience targets in order to activate a campaign, right? Now that complexity is being reduced using AI and LLMs on Snowflake and the data has always been there. And so we're starting to unlock that as a, as a value, as a value creation. And I think from a marketer standpoint, that'll give them the opportunity to put more money into creative and other relevant items so that they're driving performance as well. That's what we're starting to see, that sort of the chairs and the, and the decks are being changed so that the marketer can truly tap into performance and capability. Both an art and a science. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and thank you yeah. for clarifying that yeah. point on performance before. So I wanted to ask you about your, your relationship with, with your advertisers because I know small businesses that, that they're getting crushed because their search is going to, to zero yeah. and they were completely relying on it and their traffic dropped, dropped by 90%. Yeah. So they're pivoting to social media platforms and there's this trust factor. So how do you ensure mm. that trust with your, your advertisers and, and, and from a marketing standpoint so that they can plan for their business and grow? Sure, yeah, I mean, it's, that is purely a relationship game, especially with our small, medium customer group, yep. and being able to connect, being able to demonstrate that you know, Snapchat uh, responsibly manages, responsibly monetizes, that they have partnerships with some of the biggest you know, infrastructure partners like Snowflake to make sure that we're securely, you know, whatever data they have, whatever advertising dollars they have to spend, that we're using it responsibly and efficiently to drive their business. And we've been doing that. Like we have, our, our small and medium customer business, especially in international, has been growing uh, extremely fast. It's uh, recently in our earnings, it's like nearly doubled year over year. So we've seen the, I think the trust is, is being built, and I think in time, in many ways, um, being able to demonstrate that it's the right place to be because of the scale of the platform, because of the, the sentiment of the users on the platform, the way that they engage with brands, and then ultimately when you spend that first dollar, you start seeing out outcomes, that matters. That matters to small business more than anyone else, because they don't have the time or the money to waste where they're not going to be getting performance within matters of days or weeks. So that's what we're really focused on. That's, that's what we believe is actually one of the most important kind of growth arcs for us is democratizing these tools, democratizing access, and giving small businesses a chance to really flourish on the platform. And it diversifies also the platform and the experience for the users too. When there are many, many products, many, many businesses that are all kind of vying for their eyes and their dollar, that makes their the opportunity for us to actually serve a better ad that's even more relevant, higher. So it's a win-win kind of across the board. When you think about it, just to add one other quick thing, excuse me Dave, is Please, yeah. um, you know, what Snap is doing if a small market or small business, a performance marketer needs to optimize on conversions, right? They're trying to grow their business month to month, day to day, week to week. Now with Snowflake and Snap, they can measure and understand those conversions to customer but they don't have to send their customer data anywhere. So, you know, it's, it's leveling the playing field, it's democratizing the opportunity for those marketers, but it's also giving those small companies privacy guarantees that only big companies used to be able to afford. Now it's democratized all the way through to all marketers. It's a key point, it's like, yeah. Yeah. It, when the cloud first came out, you gave small companies the, the data center ca capability and capacity of you know, big banks, now that's trickling down through to, that's to, right. to marketers. You, you mentioned sentiment analysis. We've seen a number of demos here uh, this week uh, around sentiment analysis. What is the state of sentiment analysis and how has it progressed? Because early on, certainly from our experience, sentiment analysis wasn't really that good. You know, you could, there's a lot of false positives or yeah. false negatives and how, how has that evolved in your business and the, the industry in general? Sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll give you a quick perspective on Snap. I mean, we're very, very performance focused, so it's, it's outcomes. The sentiment is a diagnostic. Like, when you take surveys, or when you get an understanding of where advertisers' heads are, yeah. or you get an understanding of where users' heads are, um, in the way that they're consuming and communicating on the app that ultimately affects the way that they perceive ads. Um, so it, it's an important intersection. 
Um, we, you know, across a lot of the research that we've done, we found that Snap it has the most, quote, happy users, meaning they're in the most positive mental state when they're on the platform, in large part because the way that you're using Snap is very different than the way you use other social media. You're using Snap to communicate with friends and family, you're using Snap to play with AI lenses. You're not using it to, like, see if you're, you know, in or out of, of some social circle or feeling FOMO because you missed the, the party or you missed the trip that and your friends took on. And in light of the, the, the concern around youth mental health, that's a really important point, right. is, your, is your state of mind when you're using your social media platform. Yep, and it's an important reason why a lot of advertisers find it important to be on Snap because you know, just like you think about brand safety and content moderation, the same thing goes around the positive aspects of, of users on a platform, is you want your brand associated with positive feelings that uh, a user is having when they, when they see your ad or when they interact with your brand, whether it be a lens or a story ad of some sort. Um, so yeah, uh, we use it, but it's a diagnostic tool for us to best understand what are all the subsequent contributors to ultimately advertiser performance. It's a good, good distinction. You don't go there to argue politics. Right? <laughs> That's right, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. A happy state of mind, I yeah. like that. I'm, I need to spend a little more time on Snap this <laughs> afternoon probably. Pick up my spirits a little bit. Those filters going. Um, so what's next for both of you? I can go. Um, so uh, obviously the theme of this conference is, is trying to drive um, AI capabilities in a way that is very focused on the business user, right? In this case, it's a marketer. Um, and so we want to give the marketer these tools and capabilities, but reduce the friction and the complexity, right? So um, I think that's really where we're pushing. We're going to both be in Cannes uh, two weeks from now. Um, we'll have the entire you know, advertising creative community there. We'll have some of the biggest brands, obviously, globally in the world there. And I think all of this conversation will center around how do we use AI to improve the performance of marketing, right? How everyone wants to feel relevant with their products and their services. And so I think we can bring that to you know, the marketer. And I think that's really where we're focused as a company, and Snap is really, as a partner and a customer, right? They're, ju they're not just a customer, they're a partner of ours. And then we work together to solve those challenges for our, our other customers, our marketers. Yep. Yeah, yeah so uh, two, two um, kind of key dimensions. The first is the scale and access of our privacy safe tech that we've built with Snowflake. Like, we were on stage with a uh, partner booking where we initially bu started building and prototyping these solutions to get them a privacy safe measurement solution that works globally. And we're past that point, we've built it, and now we want that to be accessible to every advertiser who runs into all of these same kind of privacy regulatory or technical limitations that we have today around um, data security and privacy. So that's one. The second is past measurement, What's really important is the ability to be able to target off of this information and then ultimately optimize off of, the, off of this data in a privacy safe way. So um, our arc you know, is stabilize the measurement, make sure we're doing great measurement that advertisers care and start to make investment decisions off of and then progressively move into other areas of our product stack that drive uh, performance marketing and to work with our Snowflake team and our advertisers to, to build the best in class targeting and ranking tools that are also uh, fully privacy safe, quote, zero trust. Part of where we're going to go is we've got 10,000 customers using Snowflake every day. We want them and their marketers to be able to directly activate to Snap out of their Snowflake environment, right? That's reducing complexity and simplicity, and that's what our customers want. I'm updating my Snapchat <laughs> As we right now. Watch I gotta go check it like exactly. You're running, you're running it there. Real time. Okay. I'll send Update. you my Snapchat. John and Bill, yeah. thank you yeah. both Fantastic. so much for coming on theCUBE. A thank really you. fun conversation. Thank you so much. I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of the Snowflake Data Cloud Summit. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise technology news and analysis.